So if Aristotle had artificial intelligence to help him write. What an idea, wow. What would you say to the artists, painters, musicians, writers who believe AI is a threat to their livelihood? We have to disclose we are in an art and design school. And in art and design school, the things that we teach will disappear. Over this next decade, what truths will humanity have to let go of and unlearn? Don't ask me to write an essay when I can use a computer to write an essay. When it comes to AI art and just knowledge in the age of AI, there's a tendency to feel like we are losing some of our humanity to technology, that in some way our humanity is depreciating as we give up more of our skills and our passions to tech. Is that true? Are we losing some of what it means to be human or is AI just changing what it means to be human? Well, this is a criticism that comes usually from people that don't like technology to begin with, or they are afraid of technology, or they never understood the role technology played in civilization, right? So we are Homo Faber, the, the making man, and Homo Ludus, the playing man. Combine these two things, we're gonna play in a different way. And we demonstrated in thousands of years of our history that we know what to do with technology. Am I losing my humanity? No, I'm becoming more human. How? Uh, I'm removing all the chores. I'm removing all the chores. I'm giving my chores away to technology, to what, I, to what we call technology, but it's actually an extension of our will. We created that technology. That technology is as much part of nature as you and I. It is a form of nature. That's the most interesting part about it. The buildings that you look at outside the window, they're a, a new form of nature, maybe a second nature, but we can't deny they exist. Mm -hmm. So they transform everything. Now, how am I becoming more human? If I'm removing chores and I don't have to vacuum my floor, I have more time to contemplate. I'm not gonna say think, because thinking is a different thing. Thinking has an objective. Mm -hmm. Contemplation doesn't have an objective. Contemplation is what humans do par excellence if they understand what being human is about. And that's Aristotle. So Aristotle wrote about this, the purpose of action is contemplation. So if Aristotle had artificial intelligence to help him write. What an idea, wow. Does that make him less human? Is it less sacred, less beautiful? Or is he more human with an AI tool? He will be, ex he will excel. Mm -hmm. He will excel. So the, I wrote about AI when I was starting using both InfraKit, no, uh, GTP3 and uh, MidJourney. I wrote that it is an invitation to improve. So to me, that's what AI is. Artificial intelligence is an invitation to improve. Yeah, it's an invitation to improve. So that goes back to Aristotle, Plato, all of this. Yeah. All of these amazing people, imagine what they could have been today. And I think Actually, that's the best way to think about technology. Yeah. Imagine what Aristotle, imagine Michelangelo. With an AI. With an AI. Or imagine Michelangelo on Mid Journey, yeah. And I think with, with AI art, it's changing how humans relate to ourselves. I think up until this point, we believed that creativity was uniquely human. And now we're realizing it can be synthesized. And in the words of Kevin Kelly, creativity can be separate from consciousness. And you know, in your words too, knowledge is being changed. We're not losing it, it's just being changed. And so I think going through all of that, there's a tendency for us to reject it originally until we accept. Well, we have to disclose we are in an art and design school. And in art and design school, the things that we teach will disappear. So we are in a very strange place for this conversation because the people who will be the first, possibly the first, to disregard the value of this AI as uh, an advancement of the art and design field are here because it, it directly affects their livelihood mm. and in this classroom, students, right? So this is a da dangerous time if you don't understand how you can transform this into the new you. That's my specific next question. Yeah. What would you say to the artists, painters, musicians, writers who believe AI is a threat to their livelihood? Is it? How can anything be a threat to somebody if they appropriate it for their own purposes? Like how can a threat be a, a knife be a threat to a chef? Essentially the chef existed before the knife. So then the knife shows up and then the chef looks at it, oh no, 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 
No, no. This will cut much better than I can cut. No. I used to break it. Now it's going to cut it. No, 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 no. So that's how you need to understand it, that anybody threatened by this doesn't belong here. Mm-hmm. They are not real chefs. That's such an amazing uh, way, analogy, a <laughs> if knife, I can say it as much. A so. knife isn't a threat to a chef, um, is how we should think about AI not being a threat to an artist. What is this? Because what an artist does, imagine Picasso. Okay, so that's another interesting thing. Picasso was the first to break down Picasso. Like Picasso was the first guy to destroy the previous self and create another self. Mm-hmm. So he demonstrated that the self is a creation of the mind. And then the self can create art that you can like or dislike. But he will not be the same guy that he was 10 years ago. So he keep creating this thing. So he was the first to embrace every single new technology. Film, photography, animation, ceramics, glass, all of this stuff. Imagine him today. Imagine how he would have taken exactly what I'm using and come up with stuff signed Picasso. <laughs> because his intent will look like Picasso. Like whatever Picasso can create. But in different mediums, he created different things, which are not Picasso-like. Right. right? So any good art, any artist, any real pure artist, uses everything they discover to make art. And, and the only objective of the artist is, how can I make art with this? How can I make art with that? How can this become art? And we did this. We call it fashion, architecture, sculpture. And what would you say could be the, is the skill set required for an artist to stand out in a world where we all have access to supercomputers? What is it that, I know that an artist has more skills than I do, I could never actually paint or nobody would show up to my movies, but what is it, what's the skill set that an artist has <coughs> that would set them apart from the regular person in an era of supercomputers? The brain. The brain. The brain, the, brain, the heart, the, the whole combination of why is this person somebody I would fall in love with? In the end, that's what it is. In the end is, who is this human being? So it go back, goes back to humanity. So you are a true, true human, or a true human meaning somebody who expresses everything through their pores. AI will be just another pore. Like, you'll just express more. You, 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 here. Right. You will not, you'll not stop writing poetry because you have a, a GTP3. You'll actually use that for poetry. And I use it. I ask the question, why does the earth cry? And I think wrote a poem that blew my mind. But that poem would have not existed if I didn't ask the question, why does the earth cry? And as you being an artist compared to me, I would have never asked GPT-3, why does the earth cry? Exactly. So the thing is, and not only that, it's not only that, it's also the recognition of the value that comes back. So the, the fact that we recognize the output is valuable, that's also an artistic intent. In other words, which things do I keep? Which things do I discard? Mm -hmm. Uh, It gives me four options when I uh, do an image. Which one of the ones I will use to further teach the machine what I like? Or my, I I hate calling it the machine, but. (laughs) Sort of. And I think it's interesting when you show people something or read them something that was written or they don't know who it was written by, they would describe it as profound or beautiful. And when you tell them it was written by an AI, suddenly they take away the credibility from yeah, it. That's very so interesting. that's yeah. our, inter- our yeah. human denial. Yeah, yeah. Because I published that poem actually on LinkedIn, and people were in awe of how amazing it was. And nobody actually commented that, oh, it's not good because it's AI. I, I declared it was an AI thing. But how can it not be deep? Like, how can a machine not write better than you if you ask the right uh, question? If you ask the machine to continue a phenomenal intent. The more mediocre your intent, the more mediocre the output, output, the manifestation. But that is true in any art. So would you say that AI is actually just requires more of our brain right. in a well, world where we yeah. all have these supercomputers? So, so look at it in a, in a simple, simplest possible way. We're in art and design school. Design is a profession that transformed itself in the last 100 years based on how the technology transformed itself. What was the purpose of design? To take an object that was made by a craft person and teach a machine how to make it. How do I talk to a machine? A drawing. So I have to teach these people how to draw an object that should never be drawn because that's not how we consume it. We consume it in three dimensions. But they put some intermediary step called drawing. And everybody had to have a drawing skill. So I see how I'm limiting already what they can do. Then we have a thing called, wait, the machine doesn't get the drawing anymore. I have to dimension the drawing. Because the machine now has dimensions. Oh, how do I dimension the drawing? Well, I have to create a profession called draftsman. 
Oh, but we need a table. Oh, I have to get a table with a ruler and things, and rapidographs and pencils and things and sharpness and eraser shields. So I create a whole industry just to talk to a machine. Not because the industry has any credibility or need to exist. So you realize how technology transformed even the skill level of people and how my students today don't even need to draw with erasing. Do you know what an erasing shield is? Because <laughs> you're older. <laughs> ah, it was just because I told you. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so the thing is, so now I have not advanced one iota the object of my intent. In, in all this description, we have drawing, drafting, this, this, and that, and I've not advanced anything. I'm still limit, I'm actually changing what they need to know just to talk to a machine. Now, imagine I can dictate to the machine. I can tell the machine what I want. I want a chair that, or whatever, whatever the object is. I can narrate my entire construction to the machine. The skill of the future is being able to communicate what's in your brain to the right. machine. Yeah. So then the skill of the future becomes a poetic vision of the future. The skill of the future becomes who has the more poetic vision of what the future holds. So right now we are at a state where artificial intelligence can draw incredible, or can create incredible original images you, through a text prompt. You can now ask it to create short videos with a text prompt. What is the pipeline of AI in the world of creativity? I mean, even just five years ago, the people building AI systems wouldn't have thought it would be where it is today. Mm -hmm. What could be possible in five years that we can hardly even fathom right now? Well, in everything we do, we meaning, I mean, to foresight. So anything we do in foresight to anticipate what the future looks like, looks at data points and maximize them in the future, in a, you know, short term, long term and so on. So essentially, we look at what we already do and we assume doing it in an ideal scenario. So we are already doing most of the stuff, as you said. Well, what's the ideal scenario? The ideal scenario is not even dictating it, but thinking it. Now, can I think better outputs than I can dictate? Probably yes. Because dictation is an articulation issue. Dictation is a language barrier. Dictation is, so the ultimate, ultimate thing is a neural link between you, the human, and some output generating thing. So thought to image, thought to video, not if I'm looking at yeah, if I look at the maximization of stuff, right, and, and removing all the possible biases, right, and that's something we didn't talk about yet—the bias that is in, inherent in art. So hopefully we'll get there. And I think just a few weeks ago, Meta produced a paper where they showed um, a, th a thought to image decoder. So the retooling of the human being has to be step in step with the technology we are creating. Ask less ask less, understand more. So all of these things slowly, slowly start to build. Technology is going to grow a different human being. My f the final, final question is in the world of education. So you've stated that school has become a place where we practice for work. And as a professor, somebody that's very close to the world of education, who is also studies and a thought leader of strategic foresight, you see the way the world is going. What needs to change to make sure that we're preparing people for the future, not the past, and the jobs of the past at that? If I have so much automation in life, if I have so much augmentation, and I have so much uh, technology happening, how can I continue teaching the way I teach? I have to, so this starts already in other countries they have asked this question, Finland, for example, and they realize that we have to teach phenomena, not subjects. We have to teach the understanding of why things are happening. Because the things happening, like rain, includes chemistry, physics, <laughs> the wind moves and so on. So in the moment in which you start going back to what is it I need to learn, I need to learn logic. I need to learn how to think. Most people in this education system <laughs> don't know how to think. Why? Because they were never told how to think. Uh, taught, sorry. They were never explicitly uh, enrolled into a thinking course. So that's exactly what's missing. So if we're worried about an AI system that can write essays, and we know that the systems can, it's not about pretending that it doesn't exist. It's about focusing on the actual skill at hand, which is thinking. Well, exactly. Like, don't ask me to write an essay when I can use a computer to write an essay, because the essay was there to demonstrate my thinking. I can demonstrate my thinking in a different way. Find ways in which I can demonstrate what I know. 
but don't ask me to write something from 50 years ago. Don't take me to a business school and give me cases from 1995, how Procter & Gamble survived this or that. It's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Yep, AI is yeah. forcing us to, to redefine knowledge and the problems at hand. Any, any discovery redefines knowledge, right? Any serious discovery, especially a foundational discovery. So we have right now foundational technologies which transform society from its foundation. The issue is how quickly can we embrace it? Problem is not quickly enough in some cases, right?